I notice TED Talks often uh, tell stories, tell stories of individuals who've had an idea and tried something new to solve a perplexing problem. And I'm going to tell the story of, start with the story of this man. He was one of Canada's uh, most famous and popular media personalities 40 years ago. His name is George Atkins. He was a producer and host of radio programs, especially for farmers in Canada. He did that for 25 years. So you might wonder, well, why would a program about farming uh, be so popular in Canada? Well, quickly, you'll quickly see here that in the 1920s, the red there is how many people were farming in Canada. It's gone down a little bit since then. Now only 2% of Canadians are involved in farming. But when George Atkins was on the air, one out of five Canadians made a living from farming, and so they loved to listen to good programs on the radio about agricultural issues. What made him so popular? Well, he was a, a, a reliable and had a reliable and trustworthy program. He gave them the information they needed, and he really valued farmers. He ended each program saying, serving agriculture, the basic industry, this is George Atkins. So he really emphasized that, that without agriculture, there wasn't much else to the economy or even to our, to our lives. In the mid-1970s, George uh, went to Zambia in southern Africa, and he joined with other farm radio broadcasters from around the Commonwealth. And while he was there, he asked them questions, as a good journalist would. He said, so what was your last program about? What did you tell your farmers about? And he heard things like, well, a gentleman from Nigeria said, my last program was how to maintain the spark plugs in your tractor. And George said, well, how many of your farmers have, have tractors? And he said, well, about 7,000 farmers have tractors in Nigeria. Well, how many farmers are there in your country? Well, there's about 70 million farmers in Nigeria. And he said, well, what do you do for the other 69 million farmers? Do you have programs about oxen? He said, no, we, we, we have nothing for them. So this was very uh, upsetting for George, and because uh, for him, farm radio uh, needed to serve farmers, and, and clearly it wasn't in this case. And why is that important? Well, today in Africa, 60% of people who live in the country, uh, in the continent, uh, are involved in agriculture. And of those, three out of five are very, are, uh, farm very small plots. So they're subsistence farmers. They might have a farm the size of this room or two or three of these rooms. And uh, they, they account for 70% of the food that's eaten in Africa. And yet, they also make up 70% of the 200 million Africans who don't have enough food, who are, who are malnourished. So they, they need support, they need assistance. They don't have uh, access to many other resources, but they do have a radio. So for George, it was really important that they be able to use those radios to get the farm radio information they needed, and they weren't. But then he went from despair and kind of feeling really disappointed in his own uh, uh, colleagues to having an idea. And his idea was to develop radio programs, scripts for radio programs about simple things that smallholder farmers could do, things like generating wind, uh, uh, using the wind to generate electricity could be a good radio program, how to keep bees, we heard about that as well, and distribute these scripts to hundreds of broadcasters who would take them and use them to pr pr produce programs for their millions of listeners. So that's, uh, that's, that gave birth to Farm Radio International and we offer the script service uh, with, with uh, tips and news uh, resources for broadcasters to use. We've also developed a weekly, which is a weekly electronic news service, and training uh, courses for broadcasters to help them serve farmers better. Well, a few years ago, um, I heard about this, and I thought, what a great idea, what a terrific solution. I want to be part of that. And I became part of Farm Radio International, but as well as being an optimist and quite hopeful, I'm a bit of a skeptic, and I always ask trick, tough questions. And uh, for me, the questions were, well, do we know this works? I, I can believe that programs get on the air, farmers can listen to them. Does, does that really change anything just to hear something on the radio? My other big question was, well, is radio still the best way to reach people? Surely today with cell phones, with internet, with MP3 players and podcasting, there's better ways to reach farmers than, than radio. Is it, is it really the best way? Now, other people had the same question, and that includes uh, someone you may have heard of named, named, named Bill Gates. And he said, yeah, we have this question. It, it makes sense, but does it work? And uh, if you can find out, we'll pay the cost of your research. So we started this program, the African Farm Radio Research Initiative. And we faced the challenge of how to measure the impact. 
So what we did was we worked with 25 different radio stations and developed programs on specific topics, like beekeeping, for example, is one of them. And then we were able to see if things really changed, if farmers changed the way they keep bees or, or start beekeeping, to give an example. And uh, we needed to find out if uh, it was have a bigger impact on, where people could hear the radio than if they couldn't hear it. So we looked at three different kinds of communities, active communities where they were really involved in the programs, passive communities where maybe they just turn on the radio, but we had no other contact with them. And then we had a third kind of community we called non-listening or control communities. So if, if the same change happened in the control community as in the listening communities, then radio didn't make a difference. But if more people in the listening communities adopted than control, then yeah, radio works. So this is what we found out. And uh, just draw your attention to the middle blue bar, 22% of farmers where all they would do is turn on the radio if they happened to come up upon the program, adopted a new practice, ad adopted improved beekeeping, five times as many as in the control community. So we, we had the evidence that radio really works. It not only sounds like a great idea that, that should work, it actually does work. So that was uh, really great to, to learn and uh, we're all very excited about that. The other thing we thought about as we thought about the new technologies like cell phones, we thought well maybe instead of an alternative to radio, maybe these technologies actually make radio work better. And so sure enough, we, we, we tried one technique where we had radio stations send SMS messages to about 20 or 30 people in each village saying, hey, the program's about to come on, don't forget to tune in. This week we're talking about uh, beekeeping, tell your neighbors to listen. And sure enough, we found out that twice as many people tuned in when they got those uh, alerts and when they didn't. So we, this and other projects we've learned that the technologies we all learn, uh, have learned to use uh, actually don't replace radio, they make it even better. So in the end, what have we learned and, and what's our commitment? Well, what we're, uh, what we're happy to report is that radio, farm radio, plus new technologies, George's idea was, a, was, was, was right that, that radio with the other technologies really can help farmers in Africa grow more food, have a stronger voice, and help to feed the continent. So that's, uh, that's really great uh, result to have from our research efforts. So thanks for your uh, attention tonight, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the day.